my name is Henry Ominde. I am an activist from Mombasa, Kenya. I come from an organization known as PEMA Kenya, which stands for Persons Marginalized and Aggrieved. Basically, PEMA Kenya um, stands for the rights of the LGBT community, which is why the name Persons Marginalized and Aggrieved, because this particular community has been, in a way, marginalized. And um, PEMA Kenya comes in to stand for their rights, to empower the members of the community, and also to build their capacity. Well, PEMA Kenya focuses on health, um, advocacy issues, and also it focuses on connecting, uh, rather the connection between the religious leaders, service providers, in a nutshell, I would say stakeholders of the community. So um, it tries to integrate the two of them into a space whereby we would have more understanding of each other. And so um, Pema Kenya has several programs. I'm involved with one of them currently, known as LILO. Um, and LILO basically stands for looking in and looking out, and it does that. It brings um, the stakeholders and the community into some sort of understanding through dialogue and through um, empathy, so to say. So um, personally, I, I am a writer, and that is what I use to champion for the rights of the LGBT community. I have a blog called um, The Wholeness Effect, and I share personal experiences. I share stories that I come up with. I share people's personal stories on that particular blog. And my front to add, um, activism is quite different and unique, I would say, because um, I am more interested in having people relate to the LGBT community rather than having people um, view the community as others. I am more interested in having people understand that all of us are human. And like we say in Pema Kenya, we say that there are no special LGBT rights. They are human rights. And the fact that people hinder us from accessing our rights is what makes us to stand up and champion for those. Uh, right. So basically what I am trying to do as an activist is to make people have that understanding. And I do that through writing. Yeah. And also, other than that, I am a creative. I would say I am a singer. I am a poet. Basically, I use my talents as a platform to advocate for human rights. Yeah. Well, um, for some reason, I would say generally in the African setup, LGBT persons are marginalized, like we are viewed as other people and not really considered to have the same rights as everyone else. Hence, um, for instance, people wouldn't want to associate with gay people, even while seeking services, that everyone should have such yes. health services, such as um, school, going to school, like basically even from high school and all that, like there's that form of prejudice and discrimination which is going on. And so it's really, really important to have individuals and organizations that come in to play and focus on creating awareness and try to make people get into this space of understanding each other and um, more so understanding that LGBT rights are human rights and no one should be hindered from their rights. The same way um, we have women activists out there, it's the same way we should be viewed as, you know, we are standing for something that is not an omen, but something that is correct, something that is right, and um, for some reason has been hindered from this particular population.
I would say um, that the awareness of LGBT rights is increasing each and every day. And hence, the young population is becoming more aware of the existence of LGBT rights. Hence, yeah, I would agree that it's um, the awareness is out there. But then when it comes to the acceptance factor of it, I would say it's still something that um, we definitely need to work on because LGBT rights um, weren't considered to be human rights before. And <laughs> I think you'd notice that I keep on repeating that statement a lot. Um, it, it's basically something that we are championing for. And I am so um, passionate about it. And particularly for the young people, it's very, very interesting how um, it's easier for young people to talk about LGBT issues on social media in social spaces. You know, people would talk about it. And it's also um, very, very exciting that more of the conversation around young people in terms of the LGBT agenda is actually turning out to be positive talk. Yeah. The general experience um, in regards to activism, um, in regards to the LGBT agenda on social media, I would say it's um, accompanied with quite a lot of challenges. And some of the challenges include one, um, censorship from the government. Mm -hmm. It's not that easy for LGBT activists to just openly, you know, like openly, openly talk about LGBT issues. However, at the same time, it's also not impossible. Like we can still do that. We can still bring about um, the issue of the LGBT agenda. Um, I would say one of the challenges that we face as activists in terms of social media advocacy is constant attacks from um, people who do not understand, or, or as other people would commonly call them, homophobes. Um, people would insult the person who is responsible for bringing that issue or trying to sensitize people uh, in social media. And sometimes it would be discouraging for people. And also um, another challenge would be it's, it's very expensive to some extent for an activist to practice that because you know you need to have like internet, you need to have um, a gadget that will connect you to the internet and all that kind of stuff. And kindly most of us, including myself, basically I'll say we fund ourselves to be able to run social media advocacy. However, it's had a lot of positive impacts, and so it's definitely worth all the challenges in the end. Um, not really, but I'd say um, hopefully uh, in the next 10 years, um, we should be able to organize them, hopefully, so to say. Um, the community isn't yet, um, I would say, accepting. Um, but I, in my opinion, I would say we are heading to that space whereby there's a lot of tolerance. So for me, it's we're we're getting somewhere, and that's really positive. Um, in my pers in my perspective, um, as far as being openly gay, because I would link um, pride parades to being openly gay. I'd say it's also something that isn't common in Kenya because of the fears of rejection, being attacked, um, losing jobs, and, you know, all forms of stigma and discrimination that might pop up. But I, I would say that um, from 2010 up until now, there's been a lot of progress. And that's why I say that probably in the next 10 years, who knows, we'll give it a try and maybe I would be the one <laughs> in front with the yeah, gay parade banner. I am openly gay. I'm open to, I'll say if 
if there was a meter to measure how open I am about my sexuality, I would say um, beyond a hundred percent. In the sense that it's it's really been an interesting journey, and when I came out, I was in school and I came out online, and my family found out online, and it it really caused a lot of tension, and there was mixed reactions from my family. And as we all know, that family is very important to each and every one of us because, you know, like they are the um, support that we can always run back to. But then at that point when there was mixed tension, it was very uh, mentally disturbing to me to some extent. But I would say since coming out in, hmm, I think it was in 2015, if I'm strong. Um, yeah, 2015, 2016, around that period. Since coming out then, up until now, it's been, it's been very, very um, interesting. My family has accepted me fully. I have accepted myself fully. Um, and also being an activist and having the support of Pema Kenya and also being able to motivate and inspire other young people through the wholeness effect, um, my blog is very, very encouraging for me and makes me view my coming out as a very big plus. Yeah.